is this piece of toilet paper is coming down and get into silver. I love silver. Hey, how many years I've been talking about silver? Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is famous author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, who in this interview discussed the current state of the global economy, Russia-Ukraine war, Donald Trump, China, crypto, Bitcoin, and share his version of the events to come in the near future. Energy stocks are gold in the market, according to Shark Tank investor Kevin O'Leary. If you didn't own energy in the last 18 months, you missed the market, he said in a recent interview. O'Leary is bullish on the market this year, despite warnings of a recession and a stock crash from commentators. And one day I was on stage with, I was on stage with him at uh, Javits Center in New York. We had thousands of people, and I used the term little people. And in front of everybody, Trump walked up on stage and stopped me. He says, you don't call anybody little people. And that's the kind of man he is. He is a great human being. He says too much at times, but anyway, um, you know, a, a person's actions speak louder than their words. But when he, he reprimands me and corrects me on stage for calling people little people like Leona Helmsley did, that's a great human being. And his two sons, Don wow. Jr. and Eric, and I are good friends. They're and it takes guts to... <laughs> it takes, I would think it takes guts to reprimand Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, he, I mean, he stepped right up, Daniela. He stepped right up, don't ever say that. And so I watched his actions. <clears throat> We're upstate New York, and I'm coming by his little restaurant, and he walked in back to say hello to the staff. You know, most of them probably illegals, but he still went back to say hello because he, he was on The Apprentice at the time. Right. He was, he's famous. He's a good man. He's, his two boys are famous and good kids. As compared to Hunter, who was a character of epic proportions. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm assuming you, you would want to see him as president again. Yes. I mean, I, I'm afraid his, <clears throat> you know, he said he's, he's hated. And I don't know why. I, I watch his actions, not his words. But he, he's done a great job for this country. But he got taken down, as you know, by socialist media out of Silicon Valley. So this country's at war between socialism and this book here, Communism. This book is written in 1848. It's only 50 pages long, but it has influenced more people than any, you know, any other book in history. And it's also murdered the most people. And, you know, my friend Donald Trump, you know, we wrote two books. Donald and I wrote two books together. He was very much against China. And Biden is very much pro-China. He and his son Hunter, plus the Ukraine, plus Russia. So I'm not political, as you know, but I don't listen to what Biden says. I listen to what he's doing, and what he's doing is disturbing. It's very, very disturbing. And anybody who's ever been to war, like what's going on in the Ukraine, I feel for those people. I mean, the Ukraine is the most corrupt country in Europe, so I don't know what's going on there either. But I feel for the civilians, you know, who are getting pounded there. My concern is, Daniela, that they throw around words such, oh, we could have a limited nuclear war. Oh, give me a break. Do you know, in 1962, I saw an atomic bomb go off because I, I grew up in Hawaii, and mm -hmm. they exploded a bomb on Christmas Island in 1962. Atomic bombs are not funny. You know what I mean? They're, they're destructive. So anyway, it's, ter it's a frightening time, Daniela. It is. And... and you know, when you say you're, you're concerned that we're going to go to war, um, you know, with whom? Against who? I don't know. That's what I mean. And, you know, when you, I'm just, you know, I, I listen to the media like you do. You know, how come the FBI took so long to find, they still haven't found Hunter's laptop. I don't even know that. And how come Hillary did the same thing and they take down my friend Trump? I, I really don't understand what's going on. I'm, I'm perplexed. But Danielle, the good news yeah. is this: this stuff is this is a gold eagle, this this silver um, buffalo, and this stuff is fake. So the good news is they stay with the gold 
and I stay with silver, you know, because this is international money. This is God's money. It was put here by God. Let's go to another tweet of yours, Robert. You say the crash is here, and you actually quote one of our uh, research reports of the Valentine's Day massacre, so thank you for that. Um, but you say everything will crash, including gold, silver, Bitcoin. Don't panic. And I know you've said this, that you, you just buy more when there's, there's crashes. But why, and, and then you, you had another one along the same uh, line of thought. By 2025, gold at 5,000, silver at 500, Bitcoin at 500,000. Why? Because the faith in the U.S. dollar, fake money will be destroyed. Gold and silver, God's money. Bitcoin is people's money. <laughs> Take care. Uh, let's talk about a, a mic drop. So why do you feel gold will crash? Let's start there. And I ask this because gold's having, you know, we're speaking on a down day today, but it's having one of its best start in decades. There's a lot of good, renewed interest and in energy surrounding gold and silver prices. Why do you feel a crash is coming? Well, because um, I like crashes. When th that balloon back there, you know, our friend George Gammon, he inspired him to hang a balloon back there. The balloon is what happened after 2008. And rather than fix the problem, you know, Bernanke just pumped money into it. Then after COVID, they pumped even more money into it. So this economy is this huge balloon. And that's you and me hanging in that little gondola back there. And that's why they say, was it going to be a hard landing or a soft landing? Well, the balloon's coming down. And that's why I use those prices like 50,000 and 5,000 and all this. I want to inspire people to buy gold and silver right now. I want to get them off their butts and go down to the local dealer. And this here, this here is an eagle. My, I bought the first one in Vietnam for 50 bucks. I still have that. It was a Krugerrand though. And it was illegal for me in 72 to buy gold. Imagine that. Illegal. I just smuggled that damn thing in. I still have that thing. I paid 50 bucks for it. And today it's worth $2,000. All that means to me is this piece of toilet paper is coming down. So I'm doing my best like you are and Stansberry to do our best to get people off of fake money, which is this stuff here, toilet paper, and get into silver. I love silver. I mean, how many years have I been talking about silver? Because this is an industrial metal. It's burned at every EV, every you know solar panel and all that. This is burned up. Well, that's why my concern is it's not that silver is going up. This stuff is coming down. And that's why the Rich Dad Poor Dad, you know, 25 years now, Rich Dad Poor Dad is still number one. Imagine that. And, and I, I, I said savers are losers. So I saved my, you know, my first crew guy was 50 bucks. I bought it in Vietnam, in Hong Kong, I mean. It's now $2,000. And this used to be $50. Today, it's $30. Silver is the most suppressed, manipulated, whatever you want to call it, precious. It's, this is the hottest investment right now, silver. So I would be accumulating as much as I, I I never sell, as you know. I just accumulate. I save silver and gold, not toilet paper. Well, Charlie Munger's an old man like me. We're about the same age, you know, so... Uh, no, and wait, I, Robert, he's like 95. Well, we're, but we're in the same category. <laughs> okay. But, you know, as, when I wrote this book here, Who Stole My Pension, my concern here is that the uh, boomers are the biggest generation in history. And when their pensions go, it's going to suck cash out of the stock market. So Charlie would probably still say buy stocks. Mm -hmm. But the reason I like crypto is not Bitcoin. It's because of blockchain. And blockchain is an accounting system. You know, it's more legitimate than the Fed or the Treasury or Wall Street. So Charlie Munger is in the Fed, Treasury, Wall Street crowd. And the younger generations, millennials and below, are in, you know, iPhone crowd. This is the most powerful tool I've ever seen. I still don't know how to use it because I'm an old guy. But this thing here is the most powerful tool I've ever seen in history. Mm. And there's more tools coming, but this thing here, this iPhone, I'm on that. You know, I can call anybody in the world like that. It's amazing what can be done. So the younger generation is on this thing, while Charlie Munger is on, you know, the Fed, Treasury, and Wall Street.
two completely points of view on AI, Musk warning us like, look, it's getting out of hand. This is extremely dangerous. Bill Gates embracing it. Have you given any thought to, to artificial intelligence, Robert? Well, that's a generalized principle called ephemeralization. Ephemeralization is the ability to do more with less. And that's why I'm saying this thing here is the most powerful tool I've ever seen. So this is just a start, and AI is going to take it to the next level. So I agree with both of those guys. AI is going to replace so many people and bring so many changes. Yeah. You know, it's like look at Uber and a taxi. You know, who would ever dream Uber was possible? And I, I, you know, I still have a trouble calling an Uber taxi. I'd rather call it a taxi. <laughs> I'm so old, but the thing is, the acceleration of technology is called ephemeralization. And that's my concern, Daniel. We haven't seen anything yet because it just accelerates. Do you know what I mean? You get one invention. It's like when the car was invented and a whole new industries took off from it. But, and then, but today, you know, as I, I, get in, I get in trouble all the time too, I said, buy tuna fish. And yeah. the reason I say buy tuna fish is because tuna is a derivative of diesel, and I own oil wells. So I know what's happening in the oil industry. So I look at oil, I look at diesel, I look at tuna. <laughs> the bullish market opinion from Kevin O'Leary is contrary to what other Wall Street experts have said, warning of an impending downturn and market crash as the economy shows signs of stress. Bank of America, G. Morgan, and Citi have all forecasted at least a mild recession to strike this year, with Bank of America preparing for a 24% plunge in the market. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.